Good afternoon, dear colleagues and guests. Let me declare open a session of the Dissertation Council for the Defense of Thesis by Chen Shenan for the degree of Candidate of Philology, Specialty 10.0201, Russian Language, on the theme, a Russian translation of Sanji Ying in the 18th century, the linguistic aspect. By the orders of Petersburg University of the 4th of September 2020, number 7704-1, may Pyotr Genich Bukharkin, Doctor of Philology, Professor of the Department of History of Russian Literature, St. Petersburg University, was appointed Chairman of this Dissertation Council. Other members of the Dissertation Council were appointed in the same order. Let me introduce them to you. In accordance with the order of St. Petersburg University of the 23rd of March, 2020, number 2304-1, our session is held in the remote access mode, which includes my colleagues, members of the session council, and myself. My colleagues are Tatiana Sevalodna Rozdestinskaya, Doctor of Philology Professor of the Russian Language Department of St. Petersburg University. Tatiana Sevalodovna, can you see and hear us? Yes, of course, I can see and hear you. Viktor Arkadyevich Baranov, Doctor of Philology, Professor, Head of Department of Linguistics of Kalashnikov Izhevsk State Technical University. Viktor Arkadyevich, can you see, can you hear us? Yes, I can see both, see and hear you very well. Oleg Fefanovic Zholobov, Doctor of Philology Professor of the Department of Applied and Experimental Linguistics of Kazan, Kazan Privolsky Federal University. Oleg Fefanovic, can you see and hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you well. And Lu Lifein, Doctor of Philology Professor of Guangdong University of Foreign Studies, China. Can you see, can you hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you. Not of uh, Guangdong University of International Trade. I beg your pardon for this mistake. A foreign Trade University of Foreign Trade. And the degree applicant, Chen Shenan. Can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Also, in touch with us is the academic advisor of the applicant. Tatiana Igorevna Afanasyeva, Doctor of Philology, Professor of the Department of Russian Language of St. Petersburg University. Dear colleagues, since our session is held in the remote access mode under the order of St. Petersburg University of the 23rd of March, 2020, number 2304 one I invite all the participants to watch the procedure. And in case there's a technical failure, and I stop seeing or hearing someone, please inform me immediately and I shall announce a technical break until such disruptions are eliminated. In case if the connection with me is lost, I uh, ask next on the list, Tatiana Pseverlodnaroshdestrinskaya, to announce a technical break. If uh, it will not be able to restore connection with me, to uh, continue the meeting. Do you agree, Tatiana Sevlana? Uh, dear council members, do you mind to improve the quality of communication? Dear colleagues, uh, please remember to switch off your microphones and switch them on when you're given the floor. Let me also inform you that our session is being recorded and broadcast online at St. Petersburg University website. The speeches are being translated from English into Russian or from English into Russian. During the live broadcast of the Council session, at the moment an email is displayed to which all the participants may send their opinions and questions to the degree applicant online regarding her thesis and the current scientific discussion of the speech. These questions shall be forwarded to me by our technical support department, and I shall re read them during the discussion. Questions should be related strictly to the applicant's speech and the content of her thesis, 
and it's uh, uh, obligatory to indicate the full name, place of employment, and position of the author of the question. Questions that are not related to the scientific discussion, discussion of the thesis, its text, and assessment of the thesis itself shall not be presented. In accordance with the order of awarding at the Petersburg University, academic degree of candidate of science and doctor of science approved by the local regulations of St. Petersburg University, here and after referred to as the order, a session of the dissertation council shall be considered competent if at least two thirds of the approved members are present, but not less than four persons. Our dissertation council consists of five members. All five are present, all in the remote interactive mode. The audiovisual contact has been established with all the council members and the degree applicant. Thus, we have the quorum. Let me set forth the following procedure of today's session of the dissertation council. Approximate duration of two hours. Uh, the procedure shall include 15 items, a chairman summary report on documents submitted by the degree applicant and their compliance with the regulations. Answers to possible questions. This should take approximately five minutes. Next, S uh, applicant's summary report outlined the key points of her study. I let me remind the degree applicant that she would have 15 minutes for that. Questions to the degree applicant strictly on her report, no more than two minutes for each question. Answers of the applicant, no more than five minutes for all the questions. Five, speeches of all the council members in turn with their assessment of the thesis and the applicant's speech with a summary of their positions I mean, council members, questions and suggestions to the author. I uh, suppose that should take 10 minutes according to the, our procedure. Six, speech of the chairman with his assessment of the thesis, uh, same duration. Seven, answers of the degree applicant to questions and remarks made by the council members, no more than 20 minutes. Eight, open discussion, speeches, of the attendees with summaries of their positions and or specific questions and suggestions to the degree applicant strictly on the theme of the study. No more than two minutes for each speaker. Let me uh, draw your attention that all the uh, speakers are kindly requested to register themselves in the registration sheet and introduce themselves in full before speaking. Nine presentation of questions to the degree applicant uh, received in the course of the discussion of his speech uh, at the university website. Answers of the applicant, no more than two minutes for each question. 11, speech of the academic advisor, uh, no, unfortunately should not take more than two minutes. 12, discussion by the dissertation council members before open individual voting. For that period, uh, sound shall be switched off. Should take approximately five minutes. 13, open individual voting. Votes shall be counted by the chairman and the results shall be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. 14, making decision on awarding or not awarding the degree. And 15, closing remarks of the applicant, no more than two minutes. Dear colleagues, do you have any questions or objections to this procedure? No. Since there are no questions and no objections, let us start our session. But please remember to switch off your mobile phones, but keep uh, them within easy reach. Let us start the session. <clears throat> I'd like to give the floor to the academic advisor of Chen Shenan, Tatiana Igorevna Apanas, Doctor of Philology, Professor of the Russian Language Department of St. Petersburg University. Dear Tatiana Igorevna, welcome. Dear colleagues, good afternoon. Let me introduce 
my doctor also Chen Shinan, who was our student since 2016 till 2019. She worked really hard and now, fortunately, she's ready to defend her thesis. And I welcome all of you at this defense session. <coughs> Thank you, Tatiana Igorevna, for your introduction of Chen Shinan. Uh, he'll be given the floor later on after the applicant's speech and after the council members present their reviews. Now, let me uh, proceed to my summary report. The thesis by Chen Shinan for the degree of candidate of philology, specialty 10 0201, Russian language on the theme Russian translation of San Jing In in the 18th century, the linguistic aspect was accepted for defense by the order of academic secretary of St. Petersburg University on the 4th of September 2020, order number 7703-1. Chen Shinan wrote her thesis at St. Petersburg University <coughs> under the guidance of, as we all know, Doctor of Philology, Professor of the Department of Russian Language at St. Petersburg University, Tatiana Igorevna Afanasyeva. The number of publications which set forth the main the key results of the thesis according to the enclosed list is three. In peer-reviewed scientific journal from the list approved by the Ministry of Science and Education of Russian Federation, three publications. In journals indexed in scientometric databases, Web of Science and Scopus, no publications. The applicant submitted to the Academic Secretary of Petersburg University a full set of documents for acceptance of her thesis for consideration and defense. All the documents comply with Article 12 of Section 3 of the Order. All the documents submitted by the applicant, according to the information I received from the curator, comply with the regulation and are stored in the applicant attestation file. Copies are available from the Dissertation Council Activity Support Department, who is currently present at our session. Before we give the floor to the degree applicant, I'd like to ask, do you, dear council members, have any general questions to the applicant, and is it necessary to review the entire list of documents submitted by the applicant? No, there are no questions. Then let us give the floor, uh, I'd like to give the floor to the degree applicant for her summary report. Chen Shenan, let me remind you once again that you will have exactly 15 minutes for your speech. I'll see. Dear Chairman, dear Council members, dear Tatiana Igorevna, dear guests, good afternoon. I uh, will, I would like to show you my presentation. Hold on a second. Can you see my presentation? Yes, now we can see. Let me ask the other council members, can you all see the presentation? Yes, we can. Then let me start. The theme of my thesis is Sanji in translations into Russian in the 18th century, the linguistic aspect. Uh, Sanji Zin, uh, the uh, a book learned by heart by the Chi by Chinese children. It's the knowledge of Chinese history, philosophy, includes a three character structure, and the book reminds a uh, rhymed prose. Because of that, she became one of the first textbooks uh, for uh, foreigners who vi visited China. The members of Russian spiritual mission uh, also used this book, and they translated it into Russian several times. The relevance of her work lies in the fact that it's necessary to study translations from Chinese in the context of Russian literal language and translation. Translations from the Chinese language in the 18th century make an uh, uh, important part of the translation activity of that period, yet this theme has hardly been studied. Novelty of my work lies in the fact that 
uh, uh, first time a philological study of Russian translations of Sanji Ilin has, uh, uh, has been undertaken. I studied the uh, texts on first Russian translations and translations and com com conduct comparative linguistic analysis. And to achieve that, uh, I'd like to solve the following task. First, to review the context in which the translations in question appeared. For that, it's necessary to study the history of Russian spiritual mission, where first uh, experts on China came from, and study the uh, history of Russian literary language, and uh, study the development of translation thought during that period. Second, examine the status of Sanji Ain, its uh, peculiarities, and review all the existing translations. Three, to carry out a comparative linguistic analysis of the three translations, uh, consider the peculiarities of translation language and techniques of, under consideration and describe changes in the literary language and translation thought in Russia on the basis of these translations. The work consists of an introduction, three chapters, conclusion, and a bibliography and annexes. The first chapter pays attention to peculiar language peculiarity structure and contents of Xi Jinping and its first Russian translations and considered in Ilarion Rasohin and Alexei Leontiev. In the second chapter, uh, following the evolution of translation thought, I look at three studies uh, as they reflect the evolution of translation thought in the 18th century through comparing sources and quality of translation of the three texts. In the third chapter, the uh, Russian literary language, is, I conduct analysis of the study text of the, uh, the three level uh, morphological, syntactical analysis of the translation technique of three translations performed from the same version of uh, of uh, hieroglyphs. The three texts in question show the evolution of the translation thought in the 18th century. Anonymous translation is a word by word translation. Uh, which shows best the structure of the uh, regional text. Based on the, the rhyme structure has not been rendered, while in Rasohin's translation, more attention is paid to uh, the contents than the form, and the structural uh, peculiarities are ignored, and trans transformation of the Chinese language uh, the, is equivalent. Arsenio Leontiev, when rendering the meaning, also pays attention to aesthetic of the uh, original text, trying to perform an adequate, provide an adequate translation, uh, make it understandable, uh, poetic translation, uh, though he may also made a number of mistakes. The linguistic analysis is uh, being performed on the three level. The, uh, on the morphological level for unanimous uh, translation, it's typical the use of archaic elements uh, such as infinitives ending with T, uh, aorists, and reflexive verbs with postfixes, Xia and si. Archaic elements such as reflexive animals, uh, uh, verbs also uh, can be uh, seen in Leontiev's translation, but he, as for tra Rasohin's translation, uh, it does not contain any of the archaic animals. Adjective endings, uh, there are certain, also have certain particular, for example, in the genitive case, pre Russian forms ending in Ogo and Yego prevail and in plural, endings change depending on gender. Uh, masculine is y, v, and neutral and feminine y, y, y. At uh, the lexical level is, is 
uh, Slavonic and, and novel words it's typical for the uh, period of Peter the First linguist Slav Slavisms which play in seldom use Chinese words maybe because the trans Leontiev's translation was published and the abundance of borrowed words would make it difficult for the re readers to understand the, the, the Rasochin's translation is Slavisms very seldom but uses Chinese words very often which can be, exp be explained by the uh, task of the translation on the syntactic level, uh, archaic elements are absent in all the three texts, yet there are different or show different transformations. In Enormous and Rasochin's translation, we often see verbs in the end of sentences, the use of chres in and uh, conjunctions in the beginning of the sentence and adverbial uh, and these elements uh, cannot be seen in Leontiev's translation and Rasochin and Anonymous translation. There are also there have some differences between the two. The use of adverbial particles and in, while in Rasochin's translation, the adverbial particle is frequently used, frequently used in Leontiev's translation. In addition to that, moreover, for Leontiev's translation, it's typical to put adjectives after nouns, which is a, has a stylistic function. On the basis of that, of these peculiarities, we came to the conclusion that unanimous translation was performed by another person other than Ilarion Lasrasochin. And we believe that the unanimous translation was probably performed in the beginning of the 18th century during the first mission. And the possible translator was participant of Josip Diakonov. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Chen Shenan. Uh, do council members have any questions for the applicant? Regarding her her speech, maybe uh, questions you got while listening to the applicant's speech. No, I don't. I may uh, Shenan show the manuscripts once again uh, during the presentation, so you were not able to see the translations. That is why. Here's the unanimous translation. That's why you cannot really see. Please show the initial slides. Go back to the initial slides. This is Leontiev translation. This is Rasochin translation in three languages and unanimous translation uh, in question. Thank you, Tatiana Igorevna, for this comment regarding the presentation. Now I think we can stop the presentation. Chen Shinan, please close your presentation. Since there are no questions, let us proceed to the council member speeches and their reviews, their assessment of the thesis, and the applicant's speech and contain questions and suggestions to the applicant. Before we do that, if there are any external reviews, I, but as far as I know, we have not received any external reviews. That is why let us, let me give the floor to the council members. At that, the degree applicant may answer each review individually or all the reviews together. Uh, uh, I suggest you answer each review uh, in turn. Is that okay with everybody? Then let us 
since all the reviews have been published at the university website, I suggest the council members to focus only on the key points and questions suggest and suggestions to the degree applicant. If there are no questions, thank, let me thank you and let us start start with the reviews. Uh, Tatiana Sevelodovna, I'd like to give the floor to you. Tatiana Sevelodovna Rajdestinskaya. I will try to make my review short, but I, I think it's necessary to mention points such as relevance and novelty, which I consider uh, important. Uh, relevance of Chen thesis is beyond any doubt because her theme is connected with the history of the Russian language in the 18th century, the period when the norms of the new national literary language emerged and the role of translation in this process. Secondly, because it's connected with modern studies in the theory of translation and uh, the study of little known uh, written source makes significant contribution to uh, national and Chinese source studies is a significant stage in development of Russian-Japanese relations. Novelty of the thesis lies, of course, not only, not, uh, not so much in, the, in introducing a little studied source, uh, but the book Sanchi uh, Jin is a basic uh, encyclopedia of Chinese history and culture, which was used as a textbook uh, by foreigners studying Chinese. The author analyzes three Russian translations of this book in the 18th century, which I have already mentioned. I will not uh, mention them again. The manuscripts, the publications, the so-called anonymous translation, uh, Rasohin's translation, and Leontiev translation, the uh, Chinese ABC book. A novelty, in addition uh, to that, uh, the novelty of the thesis lies in, in the fact that these three translations of the book is studied by the, uh, with the methods of linguistic source studies, which brings the author to an important conclusion on who the author of the so-called unanimous translation was. They're using the analysis, the author uh, translation introduced the manuscript of the uh, Academy of Sciences performed at the beginning of the 18th century and traditionally believed to be done by Rasokin with the help of linguistic analysis is now attributed to another translator. The author supposes that this uh, translator was probably somebody Osip Diakonov was a member of the first spiritual mission in uh, what's lived in China in between 1715 and 1736. An advantage of the work is publication of unanimous translation, a publication of Rasokin's translation, and comparison of the three translations, the annexes as a an uh, individual study uh, should be published. I will not explain the structure of the work, uh, which was described perfectly by the uh, degree applicant. I would uh, let me just say that the history of uh, Sanji Ain, the structure, uh, history of its translation into European languages, its first translations into Russian since the uh, Russian spiritual mission was organized in 1715, uh, is analyzed in the historical and cultural context, and the first chapter is dedicated to that. And here she characterizes the seven Russian translations, saying that they have not been subject to detailed linguistic analysis, and that is important uh, to determine the author of the, each translation. The second chapter is dedicated to the analysis of the three translations performed at various periods of the 18th century. 
comparing the uh, translations with the Chinese text, Chen Shunan concludes, here I'm quoting, quoting the three translations on, uh, on the study uh, performed from the same ancient version of San Jian that consists of 1,068 hieroglyphs, though Leontiev omitted six lines. And here the author provides a fairly graphic and textological description of the sources performed with the methods of complex source study. And these observations of peculiarities of uh, spelling uh, enable author to identify the differences between the text and review the traditional beliefs where all Rasohin's translation belonged to him. And the author comes to the conclusion that not all the manuscripts were written by Rasohin himself because the handwriting uh, high handwritings are different here an interesting uh, observations on uh, spelling titles shown forms variations in spelling and frequency in relation with the new civil font this enables the author to conclude that the unanimous translation uh, is oriented on uh, Peter's uh, Petrine spelling of 1730s. The special chapter is dedicated to the quality of translation, which explores rendering form, uh, rhymed structure of the real and its contents. The material is partly represented in easy, in easy tables. Uh, let me give as an example observation of personal personal names such as Han alone with Prince or Tsar a Lord it was of uh, Priroda nature it's, uh, uh, mistakes are also analyzed which destroy the meaning of the original and inaccuracies of translation that do not affect the meaning uh, so the analysis of quality of three translations enables Chen Shinan to prove that the unanimous translation, not only by spelling parameters, was performed earlier than Rastokhin's translation, but uh, prove this observation with, the, uh, with a quality uh, analysis. An advantage of the work is the uh, analysis of all three translations in the context of evolution of norms of the new literal language in the 18th century. So the new literal language and comparing the language characteristics of the translation with translation practices of pre-Lamanasov and post-Lamanasov periods with gradual uh, uh, formation of the medium style. The third chapter contains results of linguistic analysis of all the three translations on uh, the levels of morphology, lex uh, lexical level, and syntactic syntaxes. Observations of uh, book of, uh, or infinitive forms and reflexive verbs ending in sia. These peculiarities, according to the author, come across in the occur in the anonymous translation but do not prevail and are absent in Rasohin's translation. These observations confirm in the first uh, made on the basis of textological and uh, spelling analysis of the uh, original uh, or also uh, proven on the morphological level. As for the le as for the vocabulary we're talking here about Slavisms, Chinese words, and neologism. The examples of the use and frequency and distribution of uh, those words uh, demonstrate that anonymous translation was done in the first third of the 18th century characterized by a variability of language form and stylistic heterogeneity. Leontiev's translation orients towards uh, use, uh, avoids use of Chinese words. 
in Rousseauian translation, mostly focused on uh, pedagogical tasks. As for syntaxis, the absence of archaic structures uh, sh uh, show that all translations started during the Petrine period. Here, the author analyzes peculiarities of Zhe in as uh, conjunctive, as uh, connective conjunction. Uh, preposition trees, the use of in relative clauses, the use of katori, the use of adverbial participles. So this enable the author to provide convincing chronology of the three translations, starting with the Petrine time. So the main conclusions are quite convincing. They include, first of all, that uh, the uh, anonymous translation is attributed and on the basis of uh, complex linguistic analysis, the author demonstrates a chronology of the three translations, which is also important. And these translations for the history of translation techniques, it's important that we may uh, trace uh, same techniques, uh, similar techniques typical uh, for the entire period in question. The thesis is an original independent study, introduces um, some uh, an example of a translation literature of the 18th century, attributes one of the translations, uh, makes a significant contribution to the study of the Russian language and the history of Russian Chinese linguistic and cultural context. So the uh, main goal is achieved. My comments do not affect the high assessment of the thesis and should be taken as clarifications. Request uh, first, of the text, it's not always clear when the author is talking about translation or from the uh, manuscript, from the versions of translation. I understand that, for example, the phrase so in the result of our comparison, we may com conclude that all three uh, translations in question were uh, performed with the same version of Sanji In and the, by, written by different scribes. Of course, I uh, means this, but it will be, uh, the def I would like this definition to be more concise. And so my second comment, question is that speaking of the use of adverbial participles in uh, anonymous translation, Chen Shinan sees that this is a word-by-word -word translation and the Chinese language doesn't have adverbial participles. This is a very interesting observation, but I think this statement needs some context. Otherwise, it seems to be too straightforward. So I'm only guessing maybe some other factors connected with uh, functions of adverbial participle in Russian language. Also, I'd like to emphasize high philological culture, pure command of methods of complex lingua, textological text analysis, deep understanding of theoretical issues of history of the Russian language and translation language of the 18th century, and uh, credibility of a conclusion is based on careful uh, philological analysis of handwritten and printed sources. We uh, are dealing with a fundamental independent study, which is compact and uh, well composed, written with good scientific language. I believe the thesis by Chen Shinan contains lots of new and important observations regarding the mo monument under study and translation technique should be published in the form of a monograph. That is why I have no doubt that the thesis by Chen Shinan on the theme, Sanji in translation in the Russian language in the 18th century, the linguistic aspect, certainly corresponds with all the requirements set by the order. And uh, so I will stop here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Tatiana Sevaladovna. Chen Shinan. Uh, now you have the opportunity to answer Tatiana Sevaladana's questions. Thank you. First of all, 
I would like to thank Tatiana Pseveladna uh, for her valuable comments. As for your two questions, or oh, comments, uh, first, first you said it's not always clear uh, talking about translations or uh, manuscripts and uh, translations uh, translations themselves uh, made of uh, the version of 356 lines and as for the differences in structure and spelling so here I'm talking about uh, versions and regarding your second comment about adverbial, adverbial participles, uh, I would like to demonstrate uh, a table here. Hold on a second. Let me show you a table. First, I'd like to say that adverbial participle means uh, additional action which occurs uh, along with the main action and adverbial participles are filled in fill in and sometimes adverbial participles can can be used uh, instead of adverbial participles other expressions can be used which perform the same function as Uh, look at these two uh, here no participle in Rasohin's translation contains Buduchi and Leontiev all uh, tr translation also contains Buduchi so you will see that there are more words the more words uh, if you get more words that violates the word by word principle because uh, in each line, there should be only three. Huan uh, Sen uh, is nine years old. Uh, so uh, it will be shorter. So the sentence will be shortened. In the next line, is occur the same thing occurs in the next line. There are many adverbial participles in Rasohin's translation fewer participles and you may see all the lines are shorter in the main two main texts thank you very much Tatiana Seldovna are you satisfied with the answers yes of course I'm fully satisfied now everything is clear thank you then let me give the floor to Viktor Arkadyevich Baranov for his review uh, or the, a summary of his review. Uh, dear chairman, dear attendees, dear council members, I will, we cannot see, we cannot hear, can you hear me now? I will speak up. I will read my review uh, uh, and I will drop some formal paragraphs of one of the efficient methods of study the changes of digital language is comparing languages of various translations of the same work and so it's understandable that the applicant of China for her thesis of uh, history of Russian literal language uses translations of one of the most famous Chinese books, Encyclopedia Sanji In. Uh, relevance of the work is beyond doubt, lies in the need to continue the study of changes to the key systems of the language system in the 18th century and their manifestation in texts, the need to identify the evolution of translation techniques in the in a rapidly developing and the study of digital language of the 18th century. Novelty is also obvious, uh, though uh, sign despite significant uh, to understand the Chinese society, regular 
until the 20th century, the U.S. Uh, active interest to China in the 18th century, the role of the book and its first Russian translation have not been studied. The thesis is the first complex comparative study of the 18th century uh, Russian translations. The theoretical significance of the work lies in complex comparative analysis of several translations of the 18th century and identification of the uh, goals of the authors, their techniques, methodological, syntactical, and lexical peculiarities. One of the main advantages of the work is that the comparative analysis of the translations being performed on a, against a, a wide background of literary and other translations of the 18th century. For that, the author analyzes such peculiarities that enable her to demonstrate the main changes in the literary language system in the 18th century. This is achieved with uh, use of uh, research methods where each linguistic characteristic is analyzed against the uh, language peculiarities of the period. The second advantage is in uh, consecutive clear comparing of the three translations with the trends in the translation principles of the beginning, middle, and end of the 18th century. And speaking of what uh, relevant, other relevant issues, for example, the author provides necessary information about the content, composition, and peculiarities of the sources, information about the uh, translation authors, and other background information, which enable the author to prove her point of view uh, during when analyzing the text, and the, uh, uh, another achievement of the author is dealing with a practical task, uh, task eight, set on page eight, uh, hypothesis about the time and authorship of unan the unanimous translation. Uh, the author demonstrates great command, not only of linguistic methods, when attributing the manuscript, Chen Shinan demonstrates correct. Uh, of uh, archaeographic and textological analysis. When commenting comments, the author uses questions, uh, knowledge from political and cultural uh, context between Russia and China. Correct comparison of the composition enables to identify the original text, which consists of 1,068 hieroglyphs. As was already said, the author pays special attention to unanimous translation using the uh, peculiarities of 16th, 17th, 18th century handwriting, identifying spelling peculiarities. The author proves the manuscript belongs to unanimous translator. I am given, I've given page numbers, which I shall omit. Additional uh, arguments include analysis of uh, types of unanimous translation, Rasokhin's translation, when analyzing the mythological and lexical uh, peculiarities, all the all evidence enables the author to prove that maybe in unanimous translation was performed in the 18th century during the first mission. And uh, so it's impossible to disagree with the author. Uh, very promising is the opinion uh, about the translation of unanimous translation, a member of one of the first Russian Chinese missions. The Chinese, the author's command uh, enables her to uh, analyze the, the translation techniques, uh, depend on their purposes. The purpose, the goal determines selection of linguistic means, uh, names of uh, titles, synonyms, etc. The same skill is demonstrated in sections which analyze typical mistakes, prevailing mistakes in different translations, incorrect meaning, and incorrect text components. In Leontiev's translations, uh, important to achieve the goals, sections dedicated to comparative analysis of morphological forms of translation, uh, uh, verb forms, infinitives with and uh, case endings of uh, adjectives. P verb position, uh, pre uh, and past positions of adjectives, the use of trees, uh, frequency of 
uh, conjunctions R and E in the beginning of, of sentences. The most important thing is the using her method, the applicant tries to relate uh, all the peculiarities with the uh, time translation was performed. For example, the use of Chinese verbs, Chinese words, uh, absence of adverbial participles, etc., and with tasks identified by the translator. Chen Shunan uh, is very familiar with the history of Russian literary language of the 18th century, the transformation of uh, lexical uh, morphological systems of the Russian language, and of the, which is evidenced by the analytical context in uh, relevant sections of the work regular reference to uh, dictionaries and uh, list of literature. It's also necessary to m mention practical results of the work, uh, annexes. The first one is uh, presents two uh, translations that have not been published. And the second one is a comparative publication of three translations with the original Chinese text. The main results have been tested as I will note. Uh, so all that enable us to say that the uh, uh, thesis of Chen Shunan is relevant, has theoretical and practical significance, contains new information about the language of translation, and enables to understand formation of contemporary Russian literary language. And of course, as in any thesis, in any thesis, there are some questions and remarks but these remarks are not crucial and uh, should be seen as request for requests for clarification. A context analysis is supported with the information on a number of compared or opposed forms, but such data is not given for forms with positive sa and s in the unanimous translation, translation of Rasohin described on pages 75 and 76 if such data is available, it would be interesting to learn the, uh, about these numbers. Second, the second chapter reviews three studied texts, the uh, evolution of translation thought in Russia through comparing handwriting and uh, spelling of the three texts, of the three translations. End of quote. If the first part is uh, beyond any doubt, the quality of translation, but uh, there's a question of how handwriting and spelling uh, may help to answer the question about the evolution of translation thought. The example of preserving rhymes on page 52, there's one translation. Uh, are other translations available? How many are uh, there? in uh, Leontier translation. While the word Blagachestia, piety, on the word 79, used in the old uh, manuscript, it's not classified as, as Slavism. There, there are some typos, uh, punctuation mistakes, gramma, grammar and stylistic mistakes I have given, of which I have given some examples. But these are my questions and remarks are, uh, do not uh, affect the overall impression and the high level of the thesis. The thesis by Chen Shunan on the theme San Jin In translation uh, into Russian language in the 18th century, the linguistic aspects corresponds to the main requirements set by the order of the 1st of September 2016, number 6821 slash 1 on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant, Chen Shunan, deserves awarding the degree of candidate philology, uh, specialty 10.0201 Russian language. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the author. Signed by and seal signature and seal of uh, my institution. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. 
I cannot hear you. Dr. Evgenievich, I cannot hear you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Viktor Arkadievich, for your excellent, in-depth, um, positive review. And I would like to invite Chen Shinan to answer your critical remarks and questions. Uh, thank you, Viktor Arkadievich, for your suggestions and for uh, uh, your comments. Uh, as for uh, mistakes and typos, uh, piety, of course, this is a mistake, and uh, I will certainly, should certainly describe it as Slavism. Uh, the spelling, of course, you can add to this list. The description of sources is a separate, should be a separate section. Uh, no, no comparison of the translation, so that's uh, incorrect. And as for the other two problems or questions, uh, once again, I would like to demonstrate uh, as for Sia and Sith, can you see my slide? Uh, the Sia forms of reflexive verbs in uh, past tense, there are three. So they, um, they do not prevail. And uh, 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 16 forms of reflexive verbs uh, after a vowel sound. So, and in Rostohin's translation, uh, only 13 examples. And as for the next uh, rhymed lines in Leontief translation, according to our calculations, there are over 50 lines in addition to, in our work, uh, there are the following lines, so only a part. Uh, I can, can, I will read, and you can see that all these rhymes, uh, lines are lined, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Viktor Arkadievich, are you satisfied with Chen Shenan? answers. Thank you very much. Then let me give the floor to Oleg Feofanovich Zholobov for his review. Oleg Feofanovich, please turn the microphone on. Thank you. Can you hear me well? Uh, I will, of course, in my review, uh, I shall try to make it shorter because the thesis by Chen Shenan is dedicated to translations from the Chinese performed during the 18th century. The 18th century had great significance for the history of Russian literary language. This was the time of dramatic change when the uh, old, uh, church Slavic language, uh, which was uh, replaced the literally known in Petrine, Russia, and the thesis uh, vividly demonstrates this transition from the church Slavic language, the new type of language use in translation settings, oriented towards relevance of the study determined by the need uh, for the in-depth study of uh, translations of the 18th century, which demonstrate dynamics of the Russian literary norms and various translation experiences, experiments. Novelty of the work uh, lies in the first ever linguistic analysis and comparison of the three translations of a Chinese textbook, Sun Jin Ying, performed in the 18th century. The results of the thesis have theoretical significance since 
they introduce new data on history of Russian literary language and translation activity in the 18th century. Of course, the results of Chen Chen's uh, study can be used for further research of the uh, Russo-Chinese cultural contacts and for teaching purposes. In the first chapter of the thesis is dedicated to the general characteristic of the uh, book Sanjin Yi, uh, but at the same time it contains fragments where new scientific conclusions are made by the author. For example, there is in chapter two justified criticism about uh, transforming trans uh, tr from, from the three textbooks of this. though for some time he just studied started to study uh, Chinese in the second chapter of the thesis the author compares uh, the methodology of the Russian translations in the context of revolution of translation thought. The author identifies the structural and textological differences between the translations. The author has managed to identify the typical features of the three manuscripts with unanimous translation, uh, the use of graphemes uh, used very seldom in Rasofin's translation or are uh, completely absent from it. Uh, also significant are peculiarities in the use of in unanimous uh, they uh, seem to be more frequent they are the full vowel words are completely absent from this version, while uh, in the other, uh, other two translations, lexemes with uh, not fully vowed or not fully vowed lexemes are present. The author identified in the unanimous translation uh, nouns which uh, do not appear in the other sources. The thesis analyzes their principles and translation quality in the, of the three sources. She identifies that the unanimous translations mechanically repeated the original three word structure of the text following the word by word principle. While in Rasohin's uh, translation, Rasohin's uh, original structure is not has not been preserved. The author introduced conjunctions, changed the word order, and focused on the meaning, because uh, this text was in intended for education. Leontiev's translation also demonstrates certain liberty, uh, and as line by line principle, he omitted. He tried to preserve brevity and partly the rhyme quality. In the third chapter, the third chapter contains the linguistic analysis of Russian translation. The author identifies that they all only occur in unanimous translations, uh, which is in. Uh, uh, irregularities in Rasohin's translation uh, uh, aorists are absent and the use of infinitives is more formal. Leontiev, it corresponds to the uh, contemporary orthographic norm and in Rasohin's text it partly reflects phonetic peculiarities of reflexive forms uh, recorded without the soft sign. So the author manages to prove in chapter three the when using the, a number of grammatical verb forms. 
the author managed to prove the connection of these forms in um, pre petrine period and data of uh, morphology are special interest where in all the sources you may observe variance variability as a uh, bookish forms that do not correspond to the contemporary spelling rules when analyzing the analysis the author uh, all the in, in the qualitative quality wise uh, the thesis also explores Chinese words in the three sources and explains the reasons uh, for the difference of their numbers this interesting uh, syn uh, syntaxis but here as well in the other is insufficient a special distribution of syntactic position in Leontiev's publication, for example, uh, should be studied further. The author identifies special cases of division into phrases uh, in Rasokhin's uh, translation, peculiarities of use of archaic constructions with the uh, uh, pronoun katori, uh, which occur in early translations and characterize the state uh, of the 18th century. Uh, fr uh, uh, seldom use of adverbial participle, but it's no. thus, thus, Is the difference in translation is the author manages to identify typical features of each source translation uh, in the Academy of Science Library and of Rasokhin belongs to another uh, translator. The speech skills connected with the Petrine epoch. This is a significant, this, this definitely a significant achievement of the author. It's good that the work contains qualitative data. The thesis includes two annexes, which uh, pay on pages one one nine four zero four, and include publications of three analyzed sources in the form of parallel reads, which and uh, which increase the value of the thesis. Uh, some provisions, though, evokes questions and comments. Uh, first, if the first translator, we consider Osip Diakov to be the first translator who was a member of the spiritual mission in Beijing uh, was in Beijing in 1715, 1736. Between 1715 and 1736, so that means the translation could not be attributed to the beginning of the 18th century, uh, but uh, must be, we must talk about the first third. Also, the author, the use of graphemes strictly differentiated uh, in the works of Rasokh and Leontiev and to a significant degree in the anonymous source. Uh, yes. uh, third, thirdly, the author does not provide adjective forms ending in u, u, e, o, a to decide on the distribution of variance. Fourth, on page 78, the, there's no use of uh, Slavic, also used in Rasokhin's translation, Predvazvishet, Vladachestia, and in Leontiev's publication, Rasukhinia. The, uh, by mistake, uh, old Slavism, Vladachestia, is uh, c classified as old Slavic word. Five, some conclusions 
as it uh, seem hang in the air because they are only illustrated by one or two examples. For example, the place of verb in the three sources. And finally, I may say that the meaning of partic particle j as well as uh, connective conjunction is uh, rebuked with the first example where j is followed by e or sin j izima. Uh, maybe j as an ecliptic marks the beginning of a new phrase. Despite these uh, remarks, the goal uh, set by the author has been fully achieved and all the tasks resolved. Provisions submitted for defense have been proven. The thesis is well structured. Each of the three chapters is uh, well divided into paragraphs and ends uh, in with conclusions. The uh, text is logical. The work of Chen Shenan has been tested. The main results uh, in publications in three of, of, uh, journals recommended by the Ministry of the thesis by Chen Shenan on the theme Sanjin in translations in the Russian language in the 18th century, their linguistic aspects correspond to the main requirements. Set by the order of the, on the 1st of September 2016, number 6821-1, on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant, Chen Shenan, deserves awarding degree of Candidate of Philological Sciences, Specialty 10201, Russian Language. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the, by the author. Thank you very much, Oleg Feofanovich. Chen Shenan, now you have the opportunity to answer Oleg Feofanovich's questions. Thank you, Oleg Feofanovich, for your remarks and uh, I accept second, fourth, and sixth comments, especially the about the partic partic particle J. This is a very useful. Before I did not know that it is possible to. Uh, I already found uh, appropriate literature. These are ancient Russian manuscripts. I'm going to read, and. Uh, I will explore this uh, issue further. As for your first question, the time and, uh, and the dating, Osip Diakonov lived in Beijing until 1736, but, but that does not mean that he finished his translation at that time because while the first mission was in Beijing, uh, a, a Russian uh, lung at that time uh, traveled frequently between Russia and China. So maybe he brought already before uh, the death of Osip Diakonov. Unfortunately, we don't have any evidence of that. Also, uh, there are Spell, some spelling features which prove that the manuscript was written before 1730s. That means the translation was probably performed earlier. So we believe this happened before 1730s in the beginning of the 18th century. In the beginning of the 18th century. But honestly speaking, I uh, never thought that the first uh, I thought that the first third means the beginning of the 18th century, and I have not found uh, any literature to which I can refer to determine uh, the exact period. So if you know such source, you please suggest, recommend one. As for the forms of uh, adjectives uh, and in the e or a, uh, in the thesis, uh, there is a table which shows such forms, not with e kratka, but with e. 
because in manuscripts they or frequently they made no different no difference yes. and as for you, the fifth question on uh, the qualitative examples yes of, indeed maybe it is necessary to add more examples and as for the position of the verb I can say right now, hold on, in unanimous translation, this 168 lines in which the verb is used as the predicate, and 120 end with the verb. That's in the unanimous translation, so that's the majority. And in Rasokhin's translation, there are uh, 202 lines with a verb as predicate, used as predicate uh, in 167 sentences where the verb acts as a predicate and uh, 102 sentences end with verbs. But uh, it's necessary to provide more examples. Thank you for your remarks. Thank you, Chin Chinan. Oleg Fanovich, are you satisfied with the applicant? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Then I let me give the floor to Lou Lifin and her review. Uh, thank you. Dear colleagues, uh, I will read my review. The thesis by Chen Shinan dedicated to the three Russian translations of Sanjin In, performed in different periods of the 18th century. The work consists of an introduction, three chapters, conclusion, and literature uh, list. The first chapter provides general information about the book, its com content and peculiarities, and overview of all existing Russian translation of the book, this book. The second chapter compares the uh, method of translations under study in the context of evolution of translation thought in Russia in the 18th century. The third chapter, key to this study, the author conducts comparative analysis of three Russian translations of San Jin In from the position of morphology, uh, Lexis and synthesis. The structure uh, of the thesis is rational. Uh, the work is meaningful and logical. The uh, ideas are clearly stated. Novelty of the work lies in the fact that the uh, Russian translations of Sanjin In are in, uh, insufficiently studied in Ch uh, China, while its English translations are they belong to different periods of dynamically develop, uh, developing which is reflected in the system of language means used by the translators and which demonstrate is, is uh, convincingly demonstrated by the author by comparative analysis on the translation uh, May you please introduce because Tatiana Sevladana is gone. I beg your pardon. We have to. Uh, I have to announce a technical, a short technical break. Uh, we beg your pardon. One of the council members is gone, and for that period we have to stop our session. I beg your pardon. Так, к сожалению, пока перерыв, действительно, заседание онлайн всегда предстерегает какие-то неприятности, неожиданности. Ничего, бывает. Я верну. Я здесь. Да, Татьяна Всеволодовна, выключите звук. Что надо? Выключить звук, Татьяна Всеволодовна. А, хорошо. Пока, сейчас.
пока вы говорите. Это вам. Эм, господа Люли Фейн, пожалуйста, извините, что мы вынуждены были сделать паузу. Сейчас вы можете продолжать. Хорошо, спасибо. Раз, простите за вынужденную. Or, uh, the basis of comparison linguistic analysis, the author demonstrates that the unanimous translation of Sun Jin In was created earlier uh, in Petrine period and was created uh, by uh, someone other than Ilarion Rasokin. The author also suggests the possible author she considers a member of the first Russian spiritual mission, Osip Dyakov, the possible creator of the author of this translation. Uh, in annexes, uh, two early translations of Zanjin In contains a comparative table of the three translations, the three uh, studied by the author, but the work has some, some drawbacks such as insufficient theoretical basis and comparative analysis is superficial. Besides, the thesis contains a number of typos which should be corrected. The thesis by Chen Shinan on the theme translation Sanjin In in the Russian language in the 18th century, the linguistic aspect corresponds to the main requirements set by the order on the, on the 1st of September 2016, number 6821-1, on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the author, Chen Shinan, deserves awarding degree of Candidate of Philology, Specialty 10.0201 Russian. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the author. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lefein Chinchinan. You have the opportunity to answer questions of Lou and remarks of Lou Lefein. Let me thank Professor Lou Lefein for her remarks. You uh, mentioned some drawbacks, which I shall certainly correct, especially the typos and insufficient theoretical basis. I will certainly add new sources and maybe examples, and I will uh, work. Uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Lulifane, are you satisfied with the applicant's answer? Yes, I am. Thank you. Then let me present my review. I will not read the entire review. I'll just say a couple of words uh, on Chen Shinan's thesis. At that, I will try to review her thesis as a, an expert on the uh, 18th century literature. So my review will focus on literature and culture, not so much on linguistics, because the linguistic aspect has been discussed in depth already. Let me start by uh, with a comment connected with uh, the discussion we have already had, one of the main advantages of the new order of awarding uh, academic degrees at the university, one of the main advantages is the small number of members of the dissertation council, in, which provides an opportunity for an uh, informal and open discussion of uh, any issues. And here, I um, uh, will argue with Oleg Feofanovich and support Chen Shinan with regard to the beginning of the 19th century as a, a researcher of literature. I think the beginning of the 
the beginning of the 18th century came to the end uh, in 1735 when Tretiakovsky appeared. This is only a comment, though, of course, the new format provides a more creative way to discuss any issues. And let me get back to what I wanted to say. I will not repeat what was already said by the experts who have a much better understanding uh, of the essence of this thesis. Uh, there are two points I'd like to mention. First, when analyzing literature of the 18th century, the culture of the Chinese theme is very important because uh, it's, uh, it plays a significant role in the Russian culture. It's present in the stylized version and is supported by powerful chinoiserie style, which in St. Petersburg is so well represented by a number of buildings and in literature. As a matter of fact, we see mostly the Chinese theme can be seen uh, in uh, works of Western authors. And because of that, uh, the value of uh, works dedicated to the analysis of works uh, not of linguistic but of cultural significance connected with the, the uh, direct dialogue of the Russian Chinese culture. And to this dialogue, uh, Chan Chenin's thesis is dedicated, and here I see its significance. A second point I would like to mention is the, which is speci I especially appreciate as someone who is very loyal to the traditions of St. Petersburg, uh, Slavistic tradition. Uh, the work of Chen Shinan, let me repeat myself, is called the translation of Sanjin In to, into Russian language, the linguistic aspect. And as it seems to me, the title maybe does not fully reflect the focus of this work. I think the uh, main focus is, uh, but is a philological study, is a philological study, which is dedicated to the study of memory in all its ver variants. So the context of Chinese culture and the context of Russian and Chinese relations is very well described, which I like the context of development of the Russian translation uh, science in the 18th century. Uh, there are, uh, the author makes reference to all the significant works on this topic. And here the work of Chen Shinan is, continues the, this remarkable tradition started, developed by uh, Sabalevsky, Shakhmatov, and I will not uh, mention any archaic names, uh, Nikita Meshersky, for example, and uh, directly uh, Tatiana Pseevlodnina, Tatiana Igorevna, uh, Anatoly Alexeyev, uh, Anatoly Yurovich Sorokin, late, uh, now late, uh, his wonderful translation of Cantemir. So the works of uh, philolo philo the philological works. I think our department and our both both our departments, the Russian language department, has always been interested in philology, and there is some special. This has a special meaning that the thesis Chen Chenan is defended at our university. Uh, it was very interesting for me. So this is what I wanted to say, to add to my printed review, of course, as any work. And here, of course, I agree with previous speakers. The uh, thesis uh, deserves some critical remarks. But uh, in my opinion, this is no disagreement, but as a desire to see uh, many other things. So that is why I will not uh, give you the list what I would like to see in this work, but I will wish the author to write her doctoral thesis 
that will contain uh, all the elements missing from this work. And in conclusion of my speech, uh, let me read the final part. Uh, throughout her research, Tenshinan provides, uh, demonstrates a serious, high, uh, qualified approach, uh, uh, confident analysis of the material, and make convincing conclusions. This gives us the reasons to state that the thesis by Chen Shinan on the theme Sanjinian translations in the Russian language in the 18th century, the linguistic aspect corresponds to the main requirements set by the order on the, on the 1st of September 2016, number 6821-1 on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. The degree applicant Chen Shinan deserves awarding degree of candidate of philology, specialty 100102. 0102 Russian language article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated now Chen Shinan, uh, though I uh, never I have never criticized you but I have to give the floor to you uh, if you would like to uh, answer me if not we, we may just continue uh, of course if you have any questions no I don't have any questions I have said everything I wanted to say. If you have, if you wanted to, if you want to say something, uh, please go ahead. Otherwise, we may proceed to the next item of our agenda. But before that, I would like to ask my dear colleagues and dissertation council members if uh, everybody is satisfied with, the, if you are all satisfied with Chen Shunan's answers. Now I understand. As I understand, we have not received any questions online. No, we have not received any questions online. OK, then we may proceed to the speech of the academic advisor, uh, Tatiana Grivna. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I will briefly say that in 2017, when Chen Shinan came to our university, uh, and chose her topic. She wanted to uh, study contemporary translations, and when she became my student, I tried to seduce you with these 18th century translations, and unexpectedly, uh, she uh, discovered rich, our rich archives, uh, uh, which contain texts that were translated in the Chinese School of the Academy of Sciences, uh, still waiting to be researched. And Chen Shunan unveiled a uh, wide range uh, to be of literature to be studied by us, because we don't know Chinese. So for us, our, these manuscripts are hidden. And uh, Chen Shunan dem has demonstrated that the knowledge of Chinese and the uh, archive, the skills of archive work. During the three years, uh, she uh, read a lot. She has learned a lot uh, the, the old church language. She managed to, she learned to use the archives. They, she used the archive of the Russian Academy of Sciences in the uh, Department of Manuscripts, of, or uh, she has been working with uh, experts on uh, oriental studies. So she got great experience. And now being a, a teacher, uh, a professor at the university in China, she may continue and uh, may continue her study of this topic. Uh, and Chen Shenan's thesis does not cover the full range of her works. and. For example, there's an interest in some articles. So she has much more material uh, when her thesis includes. But her main achievement, I think, is the in Petrine uh, period already. Some translations from Chinese were made. And the text prepared and all the 
researchers may use these texts for their own studies in, the, in their own studies. I congratulate Chen Shinan on completion of such a major work, such a hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana Igorevna. Now, as I understand, we may proceed to voting. But before that, let me ask you the following question. Since we are working in the remote access mode, do you, dear council members or others present, or maybe the degree applicant, have any unanswered questions connected with our working mode? If there are no such questions, we may stop, we may proceed to discussion of the results. We have two options, dear colleagues. Before we vote, we may take a break to discuss the results. And for during that period, uh, the sound shall be switched off. Do you think we need such a break? If we don't need any discussion of the results, then we may proceed and proceed to voting. I think we may proceed. Yes, I also think so. Thank you. Then I put the question of awarding to Chen Shinan the degree of candidate of philology on specialty 10201, Russian language, to the open individual vote. Let me remind you that a decision of the dissertation council on awarding a degree shall be considered positive if at least not more than a, not less than a half, but uh, no more than four members of the city council voted for it, according to Article 23 of the order. Let me address uh, the council members. Tatiana Sevelden Rajdestinskaya, what is your opinion? My uh, opinion is definitely positive. Definitely positive. A degree should be awarded. Viktor Arkadievich Baranov, what is your opinion? I think uh, we the degree should be awarded. Oleg Stefanovich Zolobov, what is your opinion? I uh, think the, the thesis, uh, the author deserves awarding the degree. Uh, pr Dr. Lifein, Professor Lifein, what is your opinion? I am is ex uh, excellent. So uh, well, we uh, should the degree should be awarded, and me as a chairman, Piotr Evgenich Bukharkin. Uh, my opinion is that the degree applicant certainly deserves awarding the degree of candidate of philology uh, 10201 Russian language. Thus, dear colleagues and guests, let me inform you that out of five council members, five voted for, no one voted against, and no one abstained. Thus, their decision to award to Chen Shinan the degree of candidate of philology, specialty 10.0201 Russian language has been made. And in conclusion, I would like to ask you, dear colleagues, once again, since our session is held and uh, some with most members working in remote access mode, do council members, are there attendees of the degree applicant, have any questions or remarks regarding the procedure of today's session? No, there are no questions and no remarks. Okay, uh, now I would like to give the floor to Chen Shinan for her closing remarks. So that should be, please uh, make it short. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I would like to thank, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Yelena Vasilna, Yekaterina Vecheslavna, and your colleagues for s organizing today's session. Also, I would like to thank Yelena Alexandrovna uh, from 
uh, Georgiev Lokov from the Institute of Linguistic Studies of Russian Academy of Sciences, Tatiana Alexandrovna of the Institute of Oriental Manuscripts, and other colleagues for their help and support. Next, I would like, of course, certainly to thank dear chairman and all the respected council members for uh, reading my work so carefully and for sending such valuable comments for attending today's session in this difficult format and for asking such interesting questions. All your mistakes I will certainly consider in my further work. So thank you once again and I will do my best and in the end of course certainly I would like to give big thanks to my academic advisor to dear Tatiana Igorevna for your patience, for your support uh, during these four years. I remember how nervous I was when you uh, when we decided on this topic because I knew nothing about the history of the Russian language and I was very doubtful, but you said that so, uh, that's why you need an academic advisor. I will help you and you don't know how important these words were for me. They gave me confidence which I needed for my work and today finally I uh, fulfilled my task. Thank you very much, this task. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chen Shenan. Uh, we congratulate you, all of us. Uh, I think all the council members agree with me. We sincerely congratulate you on the excellent defense, the interesting uh, introduction and good answers to questions. And we are very happy that uh, now uh, you have a young, promising science researcher has joined us. Uh, for me, this is especially good. I remember you in the beginning of your, uh, you were, uh, you attended my course in Russian literature of the 18th century uh, many years ago. That was, and let me congratulate you once again. I declare the session, our session closed. Uh, I thank all the council members for your participation. Please stop the online broadcasting. Uh,